Hey, it's Steph. Thanks for watching today's video. I have an update for Pandos Eyeshadows. This was originally created by Alexi. I will have her channel linked down below, but everyone who participates tweaks the rules to fit their panning style. I will get into my rules in a little bit, but if you are familiar with my Pan Those Eyeshadows updates, if I do not have eyeshadow on my eyes, that means we will have a new color story at the end of the video, and I will be creating a look with all four of the shades that I'm working on. So I'm very excited. I'm, of course, nervous because you never know what you're going to get, but if you're not subscribed to my channel, I do a lot of panning content, but I throw in some get ready with me's every now and then. So if you like that kind of video, subscribe before you leave and give this video a thumbs up. For this project, I work on four shades from my collection. Three of those are randomized from my spreadsheet. I have all of the palettes that I own in alphabetical order and then each shade broken out within those palettes and I hand select my fourth shade just so I can have a little control over the color story or if I have a shade in mind that I think I could pan easily. <laughs> um, it's been working out really well for me so I love the style that I'm doing this year. I have three ways to roll out an eyeshadow. Of course, I would love to hit pan, but if I use a shadow 15 times and haven't hit pan yet, I do have the option to roll it out. I have not practiced that rule every single time, but I have in the past and I just, I love that I gave myself that rule just to keep this project a little more interesting for myself and hopefully for you too. The third way to roll a shadow out is if I have had it in the project for three months. Another way for me to keep this project fresh and to keep moving through my eyeshadows, I have quite a lot for one person and I just want to get as much use as out of them as possible this year. I will be looking at my phone. I have spreadsheets that I use to keep track of my usage. Like I said, I've been working on four shades in this project, but I did roll in an extra shade last month just for fun. So I've been working on five shadows. So the first shade that I've been working on is from my Blend Bunny Sugar and Crunch palette. I was working on the shade Prom Queen. This is what it was looking like last update, and I had hit my 15 use, like, not goal, but my 15 use requirement. There we go, requirement. <laughs> but I said I was going to keep it in until I hit pan because I have never panned a Blend Bunny shadow, so I was just curious how long it would take. And I mainly use this shadow in my inner corner, so I knew I would hit pan pretty quickly because I use such a small brush with it. I only had to use it four more times, so I have 19 uses in this project, and I did hit a really tiny pan. If you can see that there. So, 19 uses with a small brush. It would probably take longer if you were using like a bigger brush, but this shadow is so smooth and creamy and just so lovely to use. My first impressions of Blend Bunny, like this is the first palette I've ever used from them. Love, love their formula. So this is unfortunately rolling out. Well, unfortunately because it's so beautiful, but very exciting. So we can roll in a new shade. The next shadow that I have had in here was from my ColourPop Lilac You A Lot palette. This is the palette here, and I was working on the shade Filtered, which is a beautiful, like, fuchsia color, I would say. Last update, I had six uses, and that is over the span of two months. I was able to use it five additional times with a total of 11 in this project. And 
this is it here in this bottom corner. As you can see, I have definitely not hit pan. It is a ColourPop matte, so who really knows how long those take, like 40 uses, something like that. I do see a slight dip in the shadow, but it has been in for three months, and I know I'm not going to be hitting pan anytime soon, so I will be practicing my three-month rule and rolling this out of the project. So that is two shades rolling in at the near end of this update. The next shadow is from my Alter Ego Coastal Palette. I love this palette so much, and I was working on one of my favorite shades, Pearl. It's just a beautiful, sparkly, shifty topper, and I actually used this 12 times this last month, five of those being on my nails, so hopefully I have a picture of that. I think I, I should. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> That was last month. Last month I, have I had 12 uses and I used it on my nails. I was thinking to myself, I was like, I don't remember doing my nails with that this last month. That makes sense. So <laughs> I had 12 uses last month and I used it four times this past month since the last update. So I have a total of 16 uses. This is what the shadow is looking like now. Hopefully you can tell that it has some really nice wear. Um, there might be some hard pan in it because I do use my finger every time. It's just a lot easier for me to apply it. But I do not see myself hitting pan in this anytime soon. And I did reach for it 16 times, which surpasses my 15 use requirement. So I think I'm just going to roll it out and get a new shade in this project. I have really enjoyed working on this shadow. Like I said, it's one of my favorite shades. So yeah, I just want to give a little more love to another palette, another shade. This has been in the project two times this year already. Once for the shade Abyss which is this dark shade here, and then we just had pearl. So I am excited to roll in another shade. That's three. Three. Okay. Going on to the next shade. I rolled this in last update, and it was the Beauty Bay Metamorphic Palette. This is it here. I had never used this palette, so I was so excited to work on the shade Oil. It's a gorgeous, like, blue, purple, shifty, sparkly shade. Um, this is what it was looking like when I rolled it in. I think my photos are after I swatched it, but I had not used it yet. Well, I used it, I used it in my update where I created a look, but before I rolled it into the project, I had never used it. I was able to use it four times this month, and this is it here. Sorry, the packaging is so reflective. But hopefully you can see there is a lot of use on this uh, shadow. I was able to use this shade as well called Future in my inner corner one day. But I did not use any of the shadows other than that. Um, but it is staying in my project because I only used it four times. I am so disappointed that when you open it, it doesn't shut. But if you keep something on it, or if you keep something like leaning against it, it will stay shut eventually. But that's just super annoying. So this is staying in the project. So let me swatch it for you. I totally forgot to swatch the other shades, of course, but I will share those in a minute. But this is it swatched. It's just a beautiful, blue to purple shift and then the last shade I was working on was hand selected by me and it comes from my Sigma Hazy palette I again had not used this palette so I really wanted to 
get to know it a little better. And I rolled in the shade Mist, which is a beautiful, cool toned, uh, mauve I would say, matte shade. And it is just perfect for my crease or transition. I used it five times since the last update. And this is what it's looking like here. You can't see anything. I think maybe like the M in the Sigma is starting to wear away. But there is no visible dip. I did use this palette as a whole to create a look on Easter. So I will share that. But I do have pearl topped on top of that because I am not very impressed with the shimmers in this palette. I first put this shade on my lid and it just wasn't very impactful so I topped it with this and yeah that did nothing for me so I ended up putting pearl on top um, yeah it was really disappointing but that shade is staying in so I will swatch that for you there it is under oil it's just again a really nice cool toned crease shade for me. Um, let me go ahead and swatch the other shades on my other hand. So first I will swatch Prom Queen. It is a gorgeous like peachy toned shimmer. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It's like almost wet looking. Next, I will do Filtered from Lilac You A Lot. I've had a really good run with this shadow. It's kind of sad rolling it out, but it's just a beautiful like fuchsia e matte color. And then, of course, Pearl from my Coastal Palette. is right underneath there so you can tell these shadows are just so beautiful um this was my color story well let me <laughs> i'm gonna swatch them all together i don't know what i am doing There is oil, this bottom shade here. And then of course, mist from the Sigma Hazy palette. So this was the color story I was working with. Gorgeous, cool toned, love it. Um, sorry about the shadow on my face. I didn't realize that was happening. <laughs> My, I have like big windows on the side and then I have big windows in front of me. I am so happy the sun is out uh, here in the Pacific Northwest. We cherish these sunny days. I think I will take a walk when my son take, uh, wakes up from this nap. So he loves walks and I love walks and we just love the fresh air. I am rolling in three new shades. So, like I said, I do have um, a spreadsheet with all of my eyeshadows on there. I do include my single shadows and like my, um, I don't, I do not include my liquid shadows, that's right. But I do include all of my singles and I currently have 650 eyeshadows in that category. I'm going to pull up random.org. I used to have like the random, um, random, it's just, oh, pretty random, the app, but I deleted it because I have way too many baby pictures on my phone. Uh, so I needed more storage, but we are going to generate three numbers between one and 650. First number is 519. If I roll in something that is in another project, I will just re-roll. 
but 519 ooh, is from my Profusion Mauves palette and it is the shade Ooh La La. I have not used that palette yet, so I'm really excited. Just highlight that. The next number is 286. 286 comes from my Cosmic Brushes Winter Wonderland. That palette is in my Face the Music project pan, so I'm going to re-roll. 568. Mm -hmm. 568. Oh my gosh, my Unearthly Dreamer palette. I have not used that either. <gasps> the shade Muse. Mm. And then the very last number. Why did it reset? I hate when it does that. We'll go back to 650. See? The last number, what's 548? Didn't I just, 548, oh, Sigma, Hazy, the shade Dainty. Okay. Okay. So let me um, stop, what am I doing? Let me go pull those palettes. If any of them are too similar, we will cross that bridge when we get there. But I am nervous. <laughs> okay, I'm back. And I have my, well, I already have the Hazy palette with me. So here are the new palettes. Oh my gosh, I have not looked at the shades. And I actually have not even opened my Moths palette. The uh, plastic is still on here. I didn't even think about that sorry um, let me just get the plastic off here so I can open it but I rolled in the shade ooh la la oh it's a shimmer it's this middle shade right here so let's swatch it oh I ruined the beautiful I should have taken a picture of it first. Dang it. Oh, well. Oh, ooh, this will look really pretty with that hazy shade um, mist in the crease and then this on the lid. That's a really pretty shift. The next shade we rolled in was from my Unearthly Dreamer palette. I haven't used this palette. Oh my gosh, I love that I'm rolling in palettes that I have not used. But the shade I rolled in is Muse. Oh. It is this matte right here. Let's swatch that. So I'm rolling out that fuchsia matte, and now I'm rolling in this more red toned pink. That's pretty. I wonder how this will blend out with each other. Mm -hmm. And then the last shade I rolled in was from my Sigma Hazy palette. I think that is totally fine. And it is the first shade called Dainty, which is going to be so easy to use. I'll just use that all over my lid. Oh, I didn't even think about, I stuck with the five shades instead of four. And I did not hand select a shade. <laughs> Apparently, I'm just not thinking today, but that's fine. Since this shade is more of like a lid shade for me, it actually swatched um, deeper than what it looks like in the pan. But I think it's really pretty. I'll probably still use it on my lid, but this is the difference in my color stories. I Now I only have two shimmers compared to three, which I think is fine. I love that it's still relatively cool. 
Um, and I'm excited to create a look with this right now. I already have a full face of makeup on and I'm just gonna set my phone down because I do not need it anymore. Hopefully the sun and the shadows are not bugging you, but I am going to zoom you in so we can create a look together. I'm always worried like when I zoom you in that my under eyes are all like creasy or my mascara looks weird or whatever, but it is what it is. This is real life. So I'm gonna start with the Sigma Hazy Palette. And I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush and go in with Dainty. I might, I'm just gonna use the viewfinder as my mirror and I'm gonna put this all over my lid. I do have some mascara on just so I didn't look too weird talking in the previous section of this video, like a full face of makeup and uh, nothing on your eyes just look, looks weird on me, in my opinion. I am going to take mist with that same brush and pop that in my crease. I have a feeling this is how I'm going to be using these two shades the whole month bef uh, between this update and the next. Again, I'm just using my viewfinder for now. Um, I do need to pick up a palette with a mirror because this one does not have one. These two shades blend in so well together, as you would hope <laughs> two shades would from the same palette. But next I'm going to take my um, earthly, unearthly dreamer palette and I'm going to take that shade. Wait, let's choose a brush first. What am I even doing? I am going to take this like flat but fluffy brush and I'm going to dip into Muse and put that in my outer corner. Oh, that shadow is bugging me. Okay, I do have fallout from that shade just from tapping it. That's pretty. Um, I'm kind of going to blend it into the crease a little bit just for blending purposes. Do you see the mascara on my lash line? How do you guys prevent that from happening? Because I feel like that happens every single time I put mascara on. And I'm just trying to get to my roots, you know, the, the root of my lash line. So my whole lash is coated with mascara. How do you prevent that? I don't understand. Give me any tips that you have down below. That is a really pretty color. It actually turned out, let me block this. <laughs> it turned out um, a little more cool toned on my eyes, which is a plus for me, obviously. I'm just gonna take that first brush with no additional product and blend the edges. <sighs> the sun, the sun. If I close my curtains, it would help, but I don't really wanna get, get up. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the um, Profusion Moss palette, the shade Ooh La La, just on my finger. Uh, let's do this finger because these are kind of stained. And this palette doesn't have a mirror either. What is up with these people? Ooh, that's pretty. 
it's more sparkly than I thought it would be. I think when I swatched it, it was more like a shimmer. But I see a lot of sparkle in that shade. Wow. Oh, I love this look. If I didn't have to use the oil shade on my eyes, I would just leave this like that and put the darker, oh my gosh, I think I am going to close my curtains. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, that is so much better. Sorry if that was like bugging you as much as it was bugging me. Now you can see like both eyes the same. <laughs> um, I was saying that if I didn't have to use that like oil shade, this beautiful purple blue shift, I would leave the look like this, but put this um, matte shade on my lower lash line and call it a day. I think this look is really pretty for every day. But because we are using all the shades, I am going to take oil on this super flat skinny brush and I'm going to put this on my lower lash line hopefully the shimmer and everything shows up but if not that's just another way to utilize this shade I guess I have a lot of fun creating looks at the end of these videos. Um, I, oh, you can't even see me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, have I had, I don't think I have had an update where I didn't roll in a new shadow. Have I? I feel like if I don't roll in a new shadow I would create a look anyway and just try to do a different look than like the previous update using the sh same shades just to show you guys the versatility because um, I think it's just so fun do you guys think that's a good idea or should I only create a new look like if I have a new color story kind of thing oh I kind of winged that out on accident but I like it so I want to do that to this side too. It's kind of like um, a reverse cat eye. If you recent, if you watched my last video, it's 55 minutes long, so I don't blame you if you did not watch it. <laughs> but I got ready uh, with you guys using techniques that I've never used before. Um, but they were suggested by my Instagram followers and one of them was a wing coming from the lower lash line and that was suggested by Chloe from uh, Palace and Pants. She is so sweet. I have really enjoyed kind of getting to know her. We've messaged back and forth a few times. But yeah, I think I'm going to do like a, a wing from the lower lash line a lot more often. Because that looks really nice. I love all of these colors together. And it's pretty wearable. You know what I mean? Like this shifty blue purple shade is pretty intense. Like I love it all over the eye. But I feel like this is a little more uh, wearable for this shade. If you're, you know, a little scared of color. I'm just going to go ahead and use that feature shade here as my inner corner because I do not have an inner corner shade in my color story. I'm just going to take it on my pinky. I have been forgetting. Oh, baby boy's crying. I've been forgetting an inner corner <laughs> in some of my looks that I post on Instagram. And it's just 
I feel like a look is so incomplete without an inner corner. Um, I probably, I'm going to add a little more mascara. The only mascara I have open right now is my Maybelline The Falsies Lash Lift. Um, to be honest, it like was not my favorite when I opened it, but I love it now that it's dried out a little bit. Why are mascaras like that? I, I feel like every single mascara I've tried has gotten better as it dries out. And I've heard that from a lot of different um, makeup users as well. Why can't they just make them perfect as they come out? Or like when they are opened. Got a little bit of mascara right there and then I'm realizing I have some fallout that I need to brush away from that matte color. Oh baby boy's awake. I have his monitor next to me but I have it um, on mute because I can hear him <laughs> from his room. I hope you, you can't hear him, but if you can, he's fine. He's just waking up. Okay, that is the finished look. Um, let me zoom you guys out. What do you guys think? I love it. I love it so much. Um, I, I just have so much fun, like I said, creating looks at the end of this video. So as a reminder, this is my new color story. There's five shades. You can barely see that one, but these are them next to each other. And I just, I am very happy with the look that I'm able to create with the shades. Like honestly, I could wear this every day. I won't because I have other palettes and other shadows that I'm working on in other projects. But I'm very happy and I hope you like it as much as I do. If you do, give this video a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed to my channel already uh, and enjoy my content and you enjoy me, I hope you subscribe before you leave. I will see you all in my next video. Bye.